ton of bays. Ah. Tanabe's most famous son is undoubtedly Minakata Kumugusu. He's probably most famous in Japan for his research into slime molds, which are distinct from fungi in ways I don't understand, but he did a lot more than that. He was a renaissance man. He was a world traveler during a time when precious few Japanese were. He spoke ten languages. He crossed paths with any number of famous figures, including two world leaders. He dabbled in mythology and religion, was imprisoned for protesting the government, and is possibly one degree of separation from Steven Seagal. How's that for a tease? Minakata was born in Wakayama City in 1867. He was the type of kid who was smart but did poorly in school. In high school, he was classmates with Natsume Soseki, who would go on to become one of Japan's most famous novelists. Minakata's bad grades caught up with him, and he failed his university entrance exams. Deciding that America might be a better fit for him, he up and left. It's important to note that this was not an age when you could generally do that sort of thing. Especially not when you were 19 years old and traveling by yourself. But Minakata did. He enrolled at Michigan State University, where he was expelled for drunkenness. Deciding to lean into the whole alcoholic thing, he went to Florida next, studying and collecting specimens the entire time. At some point, he joined a traveling circus, because why not, and went with them through Central America and the West Indies. Minakata's next stop was the UK. It was here that Minakata published his first work in English, an analysis of Japanese constellations. While in London, he became acquainted with Sun Yat-sen. The founder of the Chinese Republic became such good friends with Minakata that he gave him his favorite Panama hat. Minakata spent most of his time in London at the British Museum, until at some point they banned him from the premises. The official Minakata Museum only says that he was banned for, quote, causing problems, but based on other events in his life, we can assume that it was alcohol-related. After 15 years abroad, Minakata finally returned to Japan. He carried with him countless specimens stored in all kinds of improvised containers, but in the decade and change, he had failed to obtain a college degree. He got married, settled down in Tanabe, had a few kids, and continued collecting samples of fungus wherever he went. It was in Tanabe that Minakata began his political activism. In 1906, the government had passed a law mandating shrine consolidation. I'm going to talk about this in detail sometime later on, but basically, this meant that small local and neighborhood Shinto shrines would be absorbed by a large shrine in the area, and those smaller shrines would be demolished. Minakata strongly opposed this policy. Not only was the government destroying countless buildings of historical value, he reasoned, but the demolition would also impact the natural environments of the buildings, many of which were surrounded by pockets of forest. He penned editorials and wrote letters protesting the policy, and he was eventually arrested for throwing fungus at the Tanabe official in charge of the demolitions. Yes, he was drunk. Minakata spent 18 days in jail, during which he discovered several species of fungus in his prison cell. When he was released, he quipped that he preferred his cool cell to the brutal August heat outside. The government soon abandoned any pretense of enforcing the new shrine policy, as just about everybody in the country opposed it. One of the people inspired by Minakata's protests was a young man named Morihei Ueshiba, who would later go on to invent the martial art Aikido. So if you take Steven Seagal at his word, something that you should never, ever do, when he says he personally studied under the founder of Aikido, Minakata Kumugusu is only one degree separated from a fake martial artist and shitty actor.
Minakata continued his research and began soliciting donations to build a laboratory. In order to convince a banker that he was worth investing in, Minakata famously sent his target an 8 meter long scroll he called his resume, documenting his achievements. The highlight of Minakata's life occurred when he was contacted by the emperor to deliver a personal lecture on slime molds. Emperor Hirohito, in addition to being, you know, the emperor, was a qualified marine biologist. It's sad that you can't get by these days without working two jobs. Minakata presented the part-time scientist and full-time ruler with several of his specimens, which he kept in empty candy boxes. Together, the two men visited Kashima Island in Tanabe, making notations on what they discovered there. Minakata Kumagusu died in 1941 at the age of 75, having published hundreds of scholarly articles in multiple languages, but never getting a degree. His ashes were interred at the Buddhist temple Kozanji, which unfortunately had its surrounding woods harvested for timber early in the 20th century. But several of the other sites which Minakata fought for remain today. Tanaka Shrine, where Minakata researched wisteria, was established as a national monument. And so was the island of Kashima, where he and the emperor traveled together. It's impossible to say how much of the pristine nature available in Wakayama Prefecture is thanks to him. Not bad for a college dropout.